What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be making a cocktail called a JFK Harris. It was created by uh, bartender Zachary Gelnar Rubin at Little, Brands, uh, Little Branch, which is a New York bar. It's kind of an offshoot for milk and honey. Uh, the story behind this cocktail basically is that according to Gelnar Rubin, was that kind of weird or should I say according to Rubin? I was like, according to Gelnar Rubin, is that his name? I, don't, I guess it's hyphenated. That would be his whole last name and not a middle. Yeah, because if it's hyphenated, then it's a... Yeah. Never mind. So according to Gelnar Rubin, um, the holy grail for Sasha Petrosky was to have one of his bartenders, or himself, I would imagine, uh, but one of his bartenders that he mentored create the next mojito. Uh, and he decided that... Uh, and then So Gelnar Rubin decided to take a crack at it, and this is the cocktail that he came up with. Uh, I got to say, though, that Sam Ross came pretty close with two different cocktails. The penicillin came really close to that, like you know, uh, that uh, next mojito thing and also the um, and also the paper plane. Now, what I mean by the next mojito is not necessarily a cocktail that has the same ingredients as a mojito, but is just as good and a little bit different, although that's what we're doing here today. It is, I would think if someone told me that, I want my one of my bartenders to create the next mojito. I think that what that actually means, Marius, is that he wants someone that he trained to create something as iconic. Right. As the mojito, something that uh, it just saturates the cocktail culture uh, and becomes an iconic uh, cocktail. Um, this this mojito. cocktail actually is very close to a mojito, though. So a lot of people are going to say that. But what I another well, one of the reasons why I wanted to do it is because it gives you very good use of uh, uh, if you have like old red wine. So basically, um, uh, my wife opened up a bottle of wine and drank. A good portion of the bottle yesterday, uh, but uh, she didn't use it all, and the and for some reason the cork expanded in a very weird way, and she couldn't get the cork back in. So this has been oxidized, and it's no longer good. The great thing about it is that you can put oxidized wine into cocktails, and it's just fine to do that. So it's a nice use if you want to be a little sustainable. All right, it's a nice use of oxidized wine that you're not necessarily going to drink, and I hope you're not going to serve. Now, before we get into the cocktail, I want to ask you to do one thing. Uh, I want you to go hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, and I want you to go. Uh, pa I want you to open a new window, go to Barfly Freeport, and hit subscribe, like uh, on a video, and uh, the bell icon for that one too, because we have two channels now, and we really need those subscriptions and likes. Not to mention the fact that I was looking at the analytics on the new uh, channel, and it's 100% male. So it'd be nice to get a little ladies over there. We're doing some awesome stuff over there. I think you guys will really like it. All right, well, let's get into making this cocktail before this goes over long and Marius starts to roll his eyes at me. The first thing we're gonna do is take, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I like to say a small palm of mint. That, that could be six, eight, or 10 leaves, depending on what that means to you. It is entirely up to you as to how minty you would like it to be. Uh, you can test it to see you can test it for balance because everybody's palate's a little bit different and balance means different things to different people. Uh, there is no, you know, specific that's balanced period kind of thing with cocktails because everyone tastes things differently. All right, what did I do? I did, I think I did about, probably about eight leaves in there and then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of um, simple syrup. Uh, we're going to do two full ounces of white rum. I'm using Plantation Three Star, which is my go-to. Mary's probably wants me to move that because it's in the way of the tin. And even though the tin is bigger and that is see-through, it still bothers him. I could see his eyes like darting back and forth and keep getting kind of crazy behind there. Am I right or am I right or am I right? Um, am I right? No. Nope. Right? Am I right? No? No. I don't believe you. Uh, two, two ounces of white rum. It's funny because the other day, I think yesterday somebody posted a comment that said, this guy hates his cameraman I saw that and I idea. love it. <laughs> I don't actually hate my cameraman and he's not my cameraman. I mean, he is the cameraman and he's also the editor and he's also the producer of the show and he's one half of everything we do. He has a personality on the show. He has a character, even though you've never seen him. Uh, I'm gonna put this in there while I continue to talk and then we can play the, what did Leandro forget? Can you, can you tell? What did Leandro forget? Let's see how much you know, how you've learned I mean, you've watched me made, oh, make oh, are you talking over me or 400 are you talking cocktails. Yes, the, the, well, yeah, well, we can do it with the viewers too, but but you specifically have watched me make yes. over 400 cocktails. I can't say that for every viewer because some viewers probably haven't watched every episode. Some have, but some haven't. So 
not the, so they can play the game too. Yeah. And if they have their wits about them, it's a very easy, easy thing. But can you figure it out? Because I'm more interested in what you have learned. Yeah, you need the trainer, the Hawthorne's trainer. Oh, you have that. I didn't say that. Wow. I'm going to give you three yeah. guesses before we remedy this problem. I don't know. You don't know? Well, think about go. the build of the cocktail. What's the build of the, What have we done so far? Yeah, they have both tins. You got your jigger. You got your strainer. I don't know what the recipe is. Exactly. Well, here's the thing. You actually, technically, when you have mint, you don't actually need this. But I like, oh, like to give muddler? my yeah. things a nice press with this nice sure. premium muddler from Barfly Mixology Gear. Uh, look at that. It's a nice little logo on there. It's very, very nice. And I like to give it a little press. Now, you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to uh, get those bitter kind of vegetal flavors in your cocktail. You just want to give it a nice little press. And arguably, you don't really need to do this step because you're, you're actually going to shake it and you're going to shred the mint and you're going to impart the flavor. But I kind of feel like... For my money, you get more. You get more. Uh, you get more mint oil extraction from pressing lightly. You're still going to shake anyway. Um, and, but I also wanted to play that game with you and see if you could. And you and you failed. You didn't do it. Yeah. So ice into our tin. So just use all the rest of it. Throw our cocktail in there. Now this is a rocks glass. So all right, this is this is a rocks glass, but this is a rocks cocktail. So we're gonna take a nice big piece of ice that I cut with my nice Barfly Mixology Gear ice knife, which I don't have with me, but it's linked below. I really like to cut things with ice knives because you can make really nice, if you have your, if you're really talented, I haven't figured this out yet, you could cut a diamond. I've seen it happen, it's really amazing. Uh, I'm gonna learn that one day, that's my goal maybe. Um, and then uh, we're gonna put that in there, and then we're gonna shake it. All right, now. Now. I like to double strain. You know that because I get the ice shards out. Uh, Dave Arnold argues against it, saying he likes the ice shards in. And yes, it does It, it does run the risk of over-diluting. He said, just drink faster. The thing about cocktails is that they should be responsibly all right, dispatched quickly because they are going to, the ones that are up are going to lose their temperature. Once they lose their temperature, they're not very good. This one is on a rock. You can take a little bit more time with it. The other thing is I don't like to have mint pieces in my drinks. Um, I like a nice clean presentation. So we're just going to double strain that. Get all those little mint pieces out. You will still get in like little tiny mint pieces. But then if you're on a date or something and you're talking to the lady that came and met you from whatever app you're using for dating, uh, you don't smile at her and then a piece of mint is stuck right on your tooth. And you'll look ridiculous. That's what it saves you. And then we're just gonna do a little float. I take floats to mean quarter of an ounce. You could do half an ounce if you want to. Uh, and we're just gonna float that over the top. Uh, we're gonna, our best chance at layering this, so I'm just gonna throw it right on the ice. And there it is. You have used at least your oxidized wine for something else, and it looks really pretty. Look at that. It's nice. Now let's take a sip of it and see, see what's up. Oh man, that is good. What's nice is that the, 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 the wine floating on the top, you get a nice hit of that wine, but you get it with the mint and lemon uh, and rum, uh, the rum and the simple syrup. And it's like a nice tartness from the lemon. We did uh, equal parts lemon and simple syrup. So it's gonna be a little less tart than if you did like a one three quarter spec. Um, but you also have that oxidized wine, which is gonna be, you know, a little bit bitter uh, on the on it, kind of kind of working through the, the uh, your flavor profile as you go. And it's just a really nice presentation, it's really good. Uh, this, is awesome and it's kind of like works on the same idea as a New York sour or something. People like to have a two-tone cocktail. I don't know. It's yeah. very good. You guys should all go make it now. Yeah. What? What were you gonna say? If I were to guess, I would have thought the wine was denser than whatever liquid you have in there, and just like. But you would there. know that to not have been the case because you saw us do the uh, New York sour. Does that have wine in it? The wine is not denser because there's more sugar in here. Mm. So that three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup increased the density of this cocktail. So it's actually denser than the wine. There you go. You would then, and the wine, the wine, you know, obviously the wine is alcoholic. So you know, what is alcohol? But you know, it's it's the it's the byproduct of uh, yeast eating sugar. 
Yeast eats sugar and poops out alcohol. That's how it works. Uh, that's how distillation works. So there is a there is a a bit of sugar in wine, but uh, this is denser for sure. But you learned something new today. So basically, what you're saying is you've watched me do 400 cocktails and you haven't really learned that much. That's dis disheartening. Right. Not, it seems like you're not paying. You're, are you checking out behind there? Just. I got to focus on focusing and all that stuff. Oh, you know? I guess that's true. Maybe I'm being hard on you. What do you yeah. think, guys? You guys think I'm being hard on Marius? They say yes. <laughs> they say yes. <laughs> you say yes. <laughs> well, I don't know. You guys can comment below if you guys think I'm being too hard on Marius. If not, maybe maybe I'll go a whole run of episodes where I'm just really nice to Marius. Like, drippingly nice, you know? Like, uh, a lot of people get upset when I mistreat you. Although I don't think I'm mistreating you. I think I'm treating you very fairly, actually. I just don't treat you with kid gloves. I just didn't know that you needed that kind of uh, coddling. No, nothing? Marius is being silent. He's like, if I say, if I stay silent long enough, Leandro will dig his own grave in the comments, which is probably true. All right, guys, if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Barfly. Um, I don't know, what else we got? We got Barfly uh, Free Pour is a new channel that we do and uh, you guys should go subscribe to it. We're gonna be doing all sorts of awesome things. Uh, our book reviews went over there, but then also we're doing uh, experimental content. We're doing tastings from Marius's travels and some of my travels. Hopefully I'll travel soon and we'll do some tastings there. And we're gonna do some deep dives on bar programs and travel stuff and vlogs and we're basically everything that we can't do on Barfly because everyone just wants recipe, recipe, recipe. Although Barfly will also be um, expanding a bit as well. So you guys are gonna be getting some new educational content. We're just gonna make sure that everything that's on the main channel is very educational. That's it. All right, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Barfly. You get all of your, ep we get all of our episodes from both channels on two days and you get them commercial free. So, well, here's the thing. We do a thumbnail. We do some stuff some stuff in it and we give you affiliate links because we need to, but we don't run commercials in the middle of it like YouTube does. All right, guys, Marius is rolling his eyes again. That means it's lunchtime. I think little Marius Poo is a little hungry. I think we're gonna go get him some pizza or something before he has a freak attack and meltdown. All right, you guys have never seen his hangry meltdown and it's not pretty. All right, guys, see you on another time.